Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate images with Python. Now, what I used this for was generating a whole bunch of JPEGs for an assignment for my students for classification. I'm going to show you how you can generate these in an automated way, because sometimes you do need to do this for various bits of machine learning. Also, for just generating images that may eventually go together for a video, like some of the other techniques that I'm going to show you can be used for. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. I created a data set for my students that was made out of images. So I needed 25,000 images and I used the Python pill library to create those. The data set, you can see it here, it's on the Kaggle data sets and you're free to use this data set if you would like. It's called count the paper clips. And if we go into this data set, it shows you what these images actually look like. So scrolling down there, there's a couple of parts to this data set. There's the paper clips. So if we click on one of the paper clips, like paper clip 25001, you can see there are two paper clips on the paper. Now, I could have just gotten a sheet of paper and threw down a bunch of paper clips and took 25,000 pictures, but that would not be fun. So this is why I generated it this way using a program to do this. And this is a common technique in computer vision. You can use 3D generated images, especially as they look more and more realistic, to train your neural network on a much, much larger set of data. You can pose three-dimensional figures to like test if people are sitting down or standing or this kind of thing, and then display them in all sorts of, of ways. Now, there are other paper clips that I have here. So like this image, there's quite a few more of those. As a human being counting these up, I may even get this one wrong, although they're still differentiated from, from each other. Now, the answers or the why is contained in this file here, train. And train has really just two fields. They have one and then they have the number that the number of paper clips that were there. And then there's also a test set because I set this up kind of like a Kaggle. So notice these images up here are around 20, 25,001. So you'd have to, yeah, I can't get all the way down to the 30,000 where this starts at. The first 5,000 of these, the ones that you're seeing up here, were part of the test set that I evaluated the students on. So that's why you don't necessarily have a value for each, each and every one of these. So I generated the test and the train CSV. The test one, you can see it does start at 25,001. So what I'm going to show you how to do is take this data set and use regression on it with a generator. Generators will take these paper clips, and what's great about it is like this. There's just two paper clips here. If we rotate this or flip it or do any other sort of transformations, the label remains the same. So we can generate additional training data that does give richness to how well the neural network is going to, going to train and yet not have to go acquire additional data. And this is all done in memory, so you don't have to actually generate and store all of these additional images. Now this does increase the processing time, but it also, since it's being done in memory, image at a time, it decreases the total amount of RAM that you need to actually load these, these in. Now the location that you can find the source code that I'm about to show you that was used to generate this is located in the kernels for this data set. So here you can see some of the files that I added to this data set and somebody from the internet apparently has um, also added one as well, I believe, which is amazing since it's just today. But here is the generate paper clips that I am showing you. So the way that I actually generated this data set is that I put in a count. So this is how many of these paper clips you're going to want to generate. Now this is running as a Kaggle notepad. So you can definitely go in and use this code, run it directly from Kaggle if you like. And it's designed to run in the Kaggle environment. So I'll show you what that means sort of here as we go. First of all, I print out that I am generating the paper clips. 
And by the way, if I wanted to actually run it, I would click edit and this would open it up in an actual Kaggle notebook and, and I could run these. So I put in the amount of paper clips that I want to have, 25,000. I print that I'm generating it. Now this is where I get the two basic images that I'm generating this off of. So I'm using a paper clip and if we want to see what the paper clip looks like, that is it there. I've stored it on GitHub. The black is just background that gets removed by the alpha channel. And then I also have the, the paper is this other one. And these are both just images. I put them out on GitHub because the way Kaggle works, you can't really embed images or data files with these kernels. So you have to enable internet processing and it goes out and it gets those two. I wanted my images to be 256 by 256 for the students so they don't have a tremendous amount of resolution that they have to deal with. I do calculate the aspect ratio of the paperclip and I am going to keep track of the clip counts. That's so that I can generate that data set, that, that train CSV file so that I know how many paper clips were in each of these. And I'm also going to zip this file as I go. So I am creating a zip file in the Kaggle working directory called clips.zip and you can just download that after it has, has run through. Then I actually uploaded that to the same data set that you have here. So I'm going to loop through each count. I am going to create a copy of the background. The reason I'm creating a copy of the background is I'm gonna modify it. I'm going to put paper clips all over it. If I didn't create a copy of it, I would keep adding more and more and more paper clips onto the end each time and the image would look pretty bad. I'm going to generate up to 75 paper clips on a single image. I am going to keep track of this clip count, so I keep appending the, the count onto each of it. And this loop here, I'm going to basically generate 75, up to 75, maybe sometimes zero. If it's zero, then it's going to be an exact copy of the background because there are no paper clips. But I'm going to loop up to that count. I am going to choose a random number to specify how big I want to make each paper clip. So the clip size here is a random int between 30 and 60. So that is going to give me both a random angle, 0 to 360, and a random size for each paper clip. I make sure that the width maintains the aspect size. So these paper clips are always perfectly square. I resize the paper clip so that it is the requested size and I generate a random X and a Y. Now what I'm doing here with the random X and Y is the X and Y that we're going to use specifies the top left corner of the paper clip. I sort of want it more centered to that and I also want to make sure that the paper clips don't go more than about half their size off of the screen. It made it challenging for the students to have to identify a paper clip that is partially off of the paper, but I don't want them to have to identify paper clips that are completely off of the paper, completely invisible. That would just be evil, even for, even for a college instructor like me. Then I put the paper clip on to the, the rendering image. So this is the image that we're creating as we go. And that's really all it takes. I'm basically, collecting images and rendering them about and, and pasting them on. Pillow, which is what I'm using, also has the ability to let you draw a freeform and put lines and shapes and other things on. I'll probably have an example video on how to do that as well. I want to get into some augmented reality with modifying video frames one by one by one. So this is the kind of technology that I will need for that. Then what I do is I need to stick that image that was just created by Pill into the zip file. And I basically do that by creating a bytes IO and I render the image as a PNG, but I render it to this output stream. So the binary that is a PNG file, that compressed image gets written to there. Then I zip it into the zip file. Now the zip compression is not going to do too much more on top of the PNG compression. Then I generate my data set. It has the IDs and it has the clip counts. And I write that to master CSV. And then I'm done. So this is a basic image generation task. It doesn't take it too terribly long, maybe 10 minutes to generate 25,000 images. Yeah, I could probably do that quicker in something like a C++ or others, but 
This is much easier and I can generate lots and lots and lots of data for class assignments. And counting things is a very common task in computer vision. I want to show you how to also do a generator for regression and I'll handle that in a future video, probably the next video. Because I don't see as many examples out there of how to do regression with a generator. Thank you for watching this video, and if you're interested in image generation, particularly with artificial intelligence, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a like on this video. Thank you very much.